Quiet Place Part 2 is the sequel to the first Quiet Place movie that brings back John Krasinski as the director and writer, the sole writer this time around. The first movie had drafts written by Scott Beck and Brian Woods this time. They are not writers, it's just John Krasinski. And this movie picks up immediately after where the first movie left off. The Abbott family, Evelyn, Reagan, and Marcus now have to venture off of their farm home and go somewhere else to seek refuge, to seek help, because they are now all on their own. I was actually very excited for this movie because I did really love that first movie movie. I thought it was really well done. As far as John Krasinski making a horror directorial debut, it was really great. I know he's directed two other movies before that are a little more uh, not as well known. I don't think anyone really knows. I think everyone thinks that A Quiet Place is Krasinski's directorial debut, but I believe his first two movies are more like rom-com, so as far as like a debut into horror, it was just like a swing right out of the gate. It was fucking amazing how well he was actually able to handle this material and I really was looking forward to a sequel because sometimes when they announce a sequel to something that's either an original story that feels like it's pretty wrapped up or a franchise that feels like it's wrapped up but you know they have to make another one that can be disappointing but for this one where the first movie ended I was like there's plenty of room to grow and, and evolve this story. I know some people were really disappointed in the abruptness of the first movie's ending but I actually really liked it. I thought there's plenty of opportunity to make more of these to tell more stories but for this one they did a really great job of wrapping up where the characters are, how much they've grown, and now that their story is over for this part, there's still room to do another one, which is what we have now. And it was really great to see that Krasinski did not miss a beat as far as directing these sequences go. This movie is really, really well made once again. It is still very tense like the first movie. The fact that they're venturing into new territory adds an extra layer of that. It's a movie that of course is going to have a lot of jump scares because a lot of horror movies have jump scares, but in this case it actually makes more sense because silence is your ally. If you're able to roam around this place without making noise, then you're gonna live. So anything that's loud is potentially a threat. Like, this movie does have an instance where, like, some birds fly by when it's been really silent for a minute. And any other horror movie, I'd probably look at that and be like, oh, come on, what a cheap scare. But in this case, you know, those birds flapping their wings really loudly could attract, but potentially attract a monster to that location. So this is a movie where jump scares are completely kind of allowed. Every single one got me because of, you you know, the, the playing with the sound design and the fact that this movie's filmmaking is just so patient. Like, this movie, despite it being, like, about an hour and a half, like, it feels very patient. Like, it's very deliberate as far as Krasinski's execution behind the camera. Like, you never feel like they're just rushing through tense scenes just so they can get to the next one. Like, whenever a tense scene starts, you're just kind of locked in and you're with the characters and it works really well. Marco Beltrami comes back with another really good score. I liked his music for the first movie. I was glad he was asked to come back and do more for this. I thought he did an another great job. And one thing I really liked about this movie is the way they edit this, because obviously in the first movie they cut around from like, okay, we're from this character's POV right now during this uh, crisis, and now we're coming over here with these characters because they're on a separate uh, place on this farm. In this movie they do, of course, the similar thing. Some characters split up and they focus and they focus back. But because of the way they edit it, moments of tension start to rise exactly when other scenes of tension start to rise and the fact that they have to cut around from two different scenes and at one point three different like uh places to cut between like it all comes together pretty well and I, I thought they did a really great job especially near the end of the film where they do some really great editing as far as emphasizing uh certain character arcs being met and and characters evolving i thought it was really well done so if you're a big fan of the way krasinski helmed the first a quiet place movie, if you enjoyed that movie, then chances are you're probably going to really enjoy this one because it carries over a lot of his skill and in some ways even improves on it. I mean, the opening sequence alone is like fucking fantastic as far as showing what happened on the initial outbreak day, where the family was and how it affected them, what they did to actually uh, survive and get out of the situation. It's really well done. And like everything else in the movie, it, it feels like it's being very patient. Like, hey, we're deliberately kind of drawing things out, but not in a way where we're trying to bore you, just like this is a way we grow tension before things start to really go haywire. And it, it really, I think they really succeeded at that. But the thing that makes that work more than just it's actually like a really well done uh, scene from a horror and action perspective is that they introduce 
introduce how these characters are going to continue to grow in this movie, which is why I like this movie as much as I did more than just it was an entertaining romp, is because they actually do focus on character growth, uh, you know, because some pretty bad stuff happened in that first movie, and this movie is about growing from that, overcoming grief, and, and what to do next after something tragic like this happens. It, it's all really well done. Like, Emily Blunt's Evelyn in this movie, like, you can tell, because she's the only parent left. She has to lead the charge. She has to take take charge of the situation and lead her kids to safety, but it's a lot. There's a lot to deal with, and you can feel it in her performance. You can feel how heavy a burden this is, and she's really fantastic in this, but the two that kind of stood out to me that, like, completely steal this movie are Millicent Simmons and Noah Jupe. These two really stepped up their game, and they are already good in the first A Quiet Place. I remember talking about Millicent Simmons going, like, she's, like, really great, and I was glad she got this opportunity, and seeing these two actors grow in this movie and just completely nail their performances was excellent. Something fucked up happens in like the first 20-25 minutes or so and it completely took me by surprise. There were gasps in the theater. It was fucked beyond belief. It's one of those things where you're watching it and you're kind of, you get this dread yourself like, I don't know how we're gonna get out of this. You start to think we because you actually like these characters. You're put into the situation with them. You feel how painful what just happened is. It's I, I can't wait for everyone to see it and react to it. It's it's crazy what Krasinski decided to do, but I'm so glad he took that risk. And Killian Murphy is obviously a great addition to this. Obviously, he's a really great actor in so many things, but in this movie, his character in particular, he's somebody who is completely lost faith as far as like his future goes. So he's trying to, over the course of this movie, try to find that hope, try to find something to fight for again. And I thought his addition was really good. I, I really like Killian Murphy in general, so I was really happy to see him play a really good character in this movie. As far as world building goes too, they do keep it a little vague in certain areas, but they flesh it out enough where you can kind of get the gist of, okay, I see kind of what's been happening over here, what's going on over here. If I had to have an issue with this movie, and I have a couple that I'm going to mention right now, is that I wish maybe they spent a little bit more time with some of that stuff, because it, it's it's a very good skill to like have some restraint and keep certain things vague. But as far as this movie goes, there are certain things that would happen, and I was like, well, I kind of wish there was a bit more to that, you know what I mean? Uh, there's some technical things about this movie too, like uh, small, small things, but things that kind of started to add up, and I noticed like some VFX shots and uh, some ways they staged their editing. Not a big deal, and, and to a lot of audiences, they're not going to care, but after a while, there was just enough small things that amounted where I kind of noticed it. And my last gripe with this movie is uh, the ending. I thought this movie was too abrupt. As much as I liked the abruptness of the first movie's ending, I thought doing that essentially again wasn't really the best play, because with the ending of the first movie, like I said, they wrapped, they pretty much wrapped up everything. Like, you don't need to see Emily Blunt and her daughter taking out the remaining monsters. You already know that's going to happen. You see how these characters have changed and how they're potentially going to grow beyond this event. Movie could end. And it does, and it's really good. With this, the way that Krasinski is editing certain character arcs to be peaked at this exact moment, it's really well done stuff. But it feels like a great end to a climax as opposed to an ending of a movie. It felt like there are certain things that I, I needed to see a little bit more of as far as like a proper wrap up to get like really good satisfaction to leave a little bit more of a, a emotional resonance. Um, and they kind of cut it off in a weird place for me. Like uh, imagine if Avengers Endgame ended uh, spoilers for Endgame, if Avengers Endgame ended with Gwyneth Paltrow crying over RDJ's dead body, or if in Zack Snyder's Justice League, spoilers for Justice League, if the movie ended as soon as Steppenwolf's head landed in uh, Darkseid's uh, room, and then the movie just cut off there. That would be a little disappointing. You want to see the wrap-up, you want to see the heroes stand up on the thing. It's kind of the same thing with this movie, where it felt like a good end to a climax, but not necessarily a good wrap-up. Especially when you as an audience member are so invested with the situation and with these characters that you want to see it kind of properly wrapped up. But overall, I did really like this movie. I think Krasinski it really did improve and also bring over a lot of his strengths from the first movie. I think this is really well-directed. It's very intense, well-scored by Marco Beltrami, and of course, the fantastic 
fantastic performances from everyone involved. As far as like which one I like, I think I prefer the first A Quiet Place just because it feels a little more tighter and this one has certain things that I wish were touched up on a bit more. But as far as horror sequels go, yeah, this is easily like one of the better ones. They actually take the characters and give them proper character growth. It's nice to see a horror movie care about its characters. Not saying that all of them don't, but there's just so many, especially horror sequels that just don't know what they're doing. So it was really great to see Krasinski make another great horror movie. I'd like to see him continue in this genre and do other stuff or make A Quiet Place 3 if that's in the pipeline or whatever he wants to do. It'd be interesting to see him do another genre and see what else he could do as a director and writer, but I think horror horror is where he's really great. I'm gonna give A Quiet Place Part 2 a B plus. There are certain issues that I had with this. I don't think it's better than the first one, but I still had a really great time with this. If you're a fan of the first movie, you will probably be a big fan of this one too. But if you've seen A Quiet Place Part 2, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time. Thank you.